Hi everyone, how are you doing? <laughs> um, right, I just wanted to do a quick intro before this video, just to let you know what, um, what direction I've decided to go with the channel. God, they're fidgeting today, I can't stay still. As it was this weekend, there wasn't supposed to be a video of any description because I'd basically decided that I was going to give myself the weekend off and then today I was supposed to go and meet a friend but they've had to like go and work. So I thought, right, that's great, it just gives me like a free day. So that's why you've got the video that you've got because I actually intended to do this video midweek. If you've been following the channel for a while, um, you'll know that like historically I've always done like at least two videos a week. But obviously since I've moved, um, I've not been able to do that because, I mean, I just don't come up, I, I come to Oldham once a week, guaranteed, you know, at some point over the weekend I generally come down. I didn't do this weekend and that that was a conscious decision because I just thought, you know what, I just need a, need a bit of a break, you know, to like, just, just get to grips with what I'm doing here. And, but anyway, the um, decision I've made is... There's going to be videos from Barnsley and there's also going to be videos from Oldham. So if you like the videos, if you like the channel for the Oldham videos, they are going to continue. Of course, I'm going to continue telling the story of Oldham because there's still so much to say. I mean, literally, I've got 20 video ideas written down. Things that people have suggested for me to do, things that I've decided to do myself based off what I've found out, you know, what I've learned from Graves or whatever it is, you know. Anyway... Well, the fact is, you know, because, like, I like to go out and, and film in the week. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that when I live up here. Because, like, to come hold them, it's like, it's 25 quid return. And I know it's 25 quid's nothing. But, really, when you're doing it, like, twice, so it's 50 quid a week. Do you know what I mean? That's five grand a year, isn't it? No, two and a half grand. Oh, God, I'm like dying a bit with my maths. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway... I basically made the decision that I like to go out and make YouTube videos. I love it, you know what I mean? And I love to dig up history. And yesterday, you're going to watch this video and I, this, I, worked, I researched this yesterday. But um, I just like to like tell stories of people who have gone before us, you know. And, and you, well, you know that. And um, I just can't keep doing it up and down to all them like twice a week. And I want to put more videos out. I like doing it. So my decision is... You're going to get one Oldham video a week, minimum. Might do two, yeah. If I'm down twice a week, I'll fire one in, but minimum one. But then there's going to be uh, probably one from Barnsley or surrounding Barnsley. You know, there's so many towns and stuff, history around here. Barnsley's a massive area, though, so I think I'll tackle Barnsley first and then anywhere. You know, waffling again. So, <laughs> there's going to be videos from Barnsley. There's going to be videos from Oldham. That's how the channel's going to be moving forward. And, and I get it if you'd rather not watch the videos and you you know they're not for you 100% cool with that you know um, if you want to support the videos great you know if you like to watch the videos because you like the content you like the way the issue is delivered fantastic and if you don't no problem you know just know that there's going to be all done videos that that will definitely be going up at least at least once a week uh, and that's my commitment you, you know I've always um, for regular videos out anywhere and I don't intend to change that um, I'm going to get myself a new car. I'm going to sell the Teague. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to stick it into uh, probably. Probably at the moment, I'm considering doing a deal at Nissan in Oldham. That's where I used to work, and I've got a wonderful boss there. We used to be my boss, Phil. I like Nissan cars, me. You know, I think I think they're a good spec. Um, I don't know why I'm just launching into a sales pitch, but the fact is. I'm going to get myself a new car and I think I'm going to go down the Nissan route. And I like the new Micra, I think it looks pretty cool. So, and it's going to be cheap to run, cheap to insure, and it's got a really good spec, sat nav, I can play with music through Bluetooth and all. That's what's important to me. I'm not bothered about sat nav, but Bluetooth, 100%, because I like the music. So, that's what's going to happen. So, there's going to be some changes. We're going to be doing that. The Teague is going to go at some point, um, and I can't sell it, I'm not going to sell it, it's worth about 200 quid in it, it's not worth anything, it's no 8 player, it's worth nothing, um, but I'm getting a deal under scrappage, um, so if you've got something and you fancy changing, I'd highly recommend you give this a shout and uh, make sure you mention to Phil that I've sent you, um, and they haven't given me any money by the way, <laughs> I'm just saying it for the sake of saying it, 
Um, and that's it. Right, so I'm going to stop waffling because you know what I'm like. And I'm going to get into the video. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Right, everyone, we're outside St. Thomas's Church in Wordsborough. We've got the War Memorial just there. Uh, and it is a site for Commonwealth graves, which means it's got a lot of war dead. Or it's got war dead. Um, you should have already by now watched the intro. And uh, I've told you exactly what's going on with the channel and how it's going to move forward. I hope that you do choose to still support it. Um, but we'll see. We're going to be putting out the same content. Um, definitely still be covering Oldham, as I mentioned in the intro. But... Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more in Barnsley as well because I like to go out in the week and it's just not feasible for me to drive, to drive up and down Oldham. Anyway, you see this monument here? Now this is a monument to Swaith Colliery Disaster. And it says on the front what happened. So basically, I'll obviously give you some more detail as we walk around the church, but it was erected by public subscription to memory of the 143 men and boys, and they were boys as well, who were killed by an explosion in Swaith, Main Colliery on December the 6th, 1875. In the midst of life, we are in death, it says. And the church that it's at is St. Thomas's Church in Wordsborough. Um, now, the good news is as well, this church, we'll have a good look round it. It's a beautiful church, loads of history. And I'm pleased to say that I was speaking with one of the church wardens and she said, um, I'm welcome to come and do a video. So obviously I want to get in and do a vid, but I certainly want to get in because the amount of history that's going to be in there is going to be phenomenal. So yeah, December 1875, uh, there were several million, loads of, not millions, there were loads of collieries around the Barnsley area and certainly around Wordsborough. Um, this particular one, Swaith, uh, I think there was two tunnels. There was a north and a south tunnel. I'm going to be dead honest with you, I'm not really too sure what, the, what it means to have or how they work. But from what I can understand, the men were in the north tunnel. I'm going to show you the back of the monument as well because it is actually beautiful and there's some wonderful carvings on the back. I've just heard something. Oh, with that bike, Jesus. I thought I heard someone grunting behind me. Uh, before we do that, let me show you this door. So you've got these beautiful stone steps. And then this stunning, stunning door that people are walking. I want to show you the size of this keyhole. It's amazing. This is... Well, yeah. That's my hand. And then you've got this beautiful cast iron handle. Anyway, let's get down to this. Uh... So you can't actually get up to it. Well, you can. You can walk round. You can walk around here, but it's a really steep hill. Let me show you this, because I think it's bloody amazing, and it's actually brought quite beautiful. So, on the back of the monument, you've got various different carvings. And I think this one is fabulous, because if you look at it, it's a coal truck. There's a, looks like a sifting tool. There's a lantern light in the cave a pick and a shovel but if you look it looks like the lantern's light in the cave obviously it's not it's just the stone but it's just amazing and then various sorry i went too fast then uh various different bits around it anyway so there was a man uh he was called joseph mitchell and he was born in elscar which is not too far from here and when he was 12 years old, he was, he was born to poverty, he didn't have any money. But when he was 12 years old, he bought a donkey, somehow, and he started working. Now, he became an iron foundry. He bought an iron foundry, or established an iron foundry in Wordsbridale. Wordsbridale is just down this road here. 
right at the bottom. That's Wordsborough Dale. So this church here is the local church. Sorry, I'm going the wrong bloody way. So this is a local church for everybody who lived in Wordsborough Dale. And there's actually some quite significant people buried here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the play. I don't have the luxury of historical information that I had in Oldham, or I certainly haven't got sight of it yet. But I'll keep going until until then. I'm, I'm happy. I'll do my own research anyway. It's not certainly not going to stop me from finding out a few bits. But this plot up here is basically the Mitchell family. So I want to show you the sitch. We're going to go up the top. George Edward Mitchell is the son of Joseph Mitchell. Joseph Mitchell is the son of the Joseph Mitchell I was just telling you about, who owns Swaith Colliery. We're going to get to his story in a second. Uh, but his son, Joseph Mitchell, who went on to be a quite a successful coal merchant or mine merchant or calling merchant or whatever they call him, uh, he's buried here. And actually, if you look, all the graves of the Mitchell family are laid here. Now there's something really interesting on this bottom one that I really want to show you, which I thought is fabulous. But we're going to make our way down. So I think this is probably a vault that he had established. So underneath you're probably, you're probably able to go in, maybe walk down a few steps and then underneath here you'll have the coffins of Joseph and his wife Kate and George. Uh, in fact, no, it doesn't. It says Joseph Mitchell and Kate Mitchell, wife of Joe, all right, and mother of the above. I'm gonna sneeze. And then you've got another one. Oh, look at this. So, this is the grave of John Mitchell of Heath, Heathercliff, Pennystone. He died 11, January 11th, 1897, age 52, and also John Mitchell, infant son of the above. He died in 1876, aged three months. Right. Right, so here we go. So let me tell you the story. You know what I'm like, I always go off on one, don't I? So this is the grave of Joseph Mitchell. Now he was born, woo, trying to balance here. Joseph was born in 1807 and he died on January the 17th, 7, 1876. Now, Joseph was the owner, he was the managing partner of Swaith Colliery. He lived in a place called Swaith Hall with his wife, Anna, who actually outlived him. Uh, I put pictures of them both in there. She died in 1900, he died quite a few years before that. But what killed Joseph, they say, was the explosion. He couldn't cope with it. He were actually managing the... the uh, Collier at the time it was actually his son Joseph who we showed you the first grave up there it was him that was managing the colliery but the stress of it killed him um, the other thing I want to show you is this now this is another Mitchell family member and it looks like it says here the stone excavated during the sinking of the shaft from the new colliery of, at, at Grimethorpe commenced October 8th, 1894. Grimethorpe was quite prominent in the uh, mining strikes in the 80s, I believe. Um, and there's a brass band, a famous brass band that's been uh, founded there. I'm trying to see if I can move this ivy. The ivy's cut into the bloody stone. But it says, memory of see if I could pull that leaf away oh, I can't do it I can't reach it's a memory of one of the Mitchell family anyway um, so they've obviously taken this stone sorry everyone the camera's all over the show they've obviously taken this stone and created a tombstone out of it which I think is an amazing idea but there you go coal mining history right here in front of us. So the Swaith explosion, uh, the, collier, the collier itself employed 300 men and boys. And on this particular day, there was 143 people 
killed in the um, in the disaster. Um, among them was uh, I think the youngest lad I managed to find record of was a 12 year old boy. There was, I mean, I'm not trying to bring anyone down, but you know, if you've got children or you've had children who have been that age, you can sort of, you know, sort of think to yourself, my God, you know, what these children had to do all these years ago, the, you know, the child labour that went on. Obviously, no, you know, no one blinked an eyelid back then. It was a hard life. Everybody had to pull the, you know, pull the skates up. It's not like we have it now really easy. Not saying everybody does. I know some people struggle. I struggle, bloody hell. Um, them ancient stones there going down to the graves. And I've got some footage. I'll put it in at the end. I went to the... Uh, there's another cemetery over there uh, that I went to yesterday. Because um, I've had designs on coming filming this area for quite a while. And I, me, I was with uh, my mother and uh, her husband and... Um, we went down and had a look, and it was, uh, yeah, there's some beautiful blue, uh, you know, blackberries down there. I'm going to go and pick a lord. Um, anyway, what was that? What was I saying? Yeah, so 143 men and boys died. It's fair to say there was more grown men than, than little boys down there, but still. Um, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Um, I think I saw a grave to the people who had died there. Or one of the managers um, up in Wordsboro Village. There's a church up there, and I'm sure I saw a grave. I'm going to carry on telling you the story and showing you around. We're going to have a look at the back of the church, but I want to show you this one. So this is a sacred memory of Elizabeth he Elizabeth Emsley Bailey, beloved wife of William Emsley Raleigh. Oh, really? What Raleigh? Really, Bailey Raleigh. Uh, she died in 1908. William, who was also a lieutenant... An OBE, an MA, which is a Master of Arts, and a JP for this area. Now, I have found him. He was a solicitor and he employed quite a few people. But there's another story to uh, there's another story to William. You don't get to be an OBE, a Master of Arts, and a JP just by being, um, you know, a solicitor. And I'm not, you know, I'm not really solicited down. It's obviously a very, very, very clever job. I'm just saying. Not all solicitors get made or be aged, are they? So there's a story, and I'm going to find out. Um, I think it. I think this also means alderman, or it comes before lieutenant or lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant Colonel William Emsley Rally, OBE, MAJP. Wow, what a title! There's also some other people buried in there with him. Um. Walter Hugh Raleigh, second, lieutenant, second lieutenant, it's lieutenant, not lieutenant, it's lieutenant in English. Fifth York Lancaster Regiment, youngest son of the above. Oh, bless him. Born 1893, killed in action in Fleur, Fleur Bay. 14th of May, 1915. And also William Henry George Raleigh, Captain Third Alexandra, Prince of Wales, Princess of Wales, own Yorkshire Regiment, eldest son of the above. My God, he was killed at Givenchy on the 15th of June, 1915. Shite. Poor guess. So the first son were killed in May and then the other one goes down in June. That is awful. Awful. Oh, look. So I'm going to find out. I suspect... Uh, did I mention before? I'm few. I'm, I'm yeah. I did. I'm sure I did. Um, I'm filming this church in the next couple of weeks. I can't wait to get inside uh, and see what's what. As I said, I spoke to a lovely lady yesterday who very kindly agreed to let me go in and film. Obviously, I've told her to take a look at the channel. <coughs> I'm not going to walk right round this back because it's a bit secluded. Do you know what I mean? Look. Just in case there's a nut around here or something. <coughs> we'll have a quick look. Yeah, so um, she very kindly said that I can... Uh... Oh, I'm too freaked out. I can't go around, just in case. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm a bit of a soft ass, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. 
Uh, it's just really secluded and like round, round that corner there, right? You couldn't see it, but there's a dip that goes into the side of the church. You know, like that alcove there. So there could be a fella stood there or anything. I'm not putting myself in jeopardy. Um, so yeah, well, I was telling you the story of the Sway of Colliery, weren't I? This is the, the most shocking thing that I heard about it. They said, when the explosion happened in the collar, colliery, obviously it was a terrible thing and it took a while for people to be able to go down, but they did get a crew of fellas down who went to see what was going on. You know, and see who they could help and who, you know, who, who was still alive. And they said that when they went down there, there were some men there. They were in complete pitch darkness. There was gases in the air from the explosion and they were running around screaming they'd base, and they'd gone completely insane. They'd, it made them insane. They'd lost their minds, literally lost their minds. And I just, that was the most shocking thing that I heard, you know, for you to, to lose your mind. I don't know. Uh, there's that uh, cemetery. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to wrap it up because I <laughs> look at him there at window. Can you see him? <laughs> um, I'm going to wrap it up, uh, but I'm going to put in some footage from yesterday so you can have a look down the cemetery if you're interested. Um, as I said, uh, thanks for still supporting the channel. There'll obviously be regular videos. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. There's loads of what I do around here. I just honestly, I just can't can't afford to keep driving i mean i go to Oldham once a week i'll give myself a break this weekend because there was stuff i needed to do in the house um but yeah so there's definitely going to be a lot more that i'm going to show you uh, there's loads of history that i can tell you about interesting facts so yeah we'll do that and keep posted for the bonus uh stuff yeah so as i said we've come to look at uh Boy, can't even bleed and see it now. Um, but I didn't notice it. Simon just noticed all these bloody gravestones. This is a graveyard, and also these gorgeous. Um, oh, I ain't got my bloody controller. Um, I forgot to put my controller on my camera, so we don't know basic. We're going to get this filming today, but uh, this is. It's like little. Are they quail them? They like little white chickens. <clears throat> oh, they're beautiful. So this is the graveyard. Can't get this thing to work. Oh, they're making nice noises. Oh, look, they're fighting. <laughs> now when all the here, I'll come and look at them. I didn't know this graveyard was here though. So let's get down and look at some of these these uh some big ones and all. Yeah. They haven't got stones. No. Uh, I can't actually get my camera to show you everyone, but the uh look at the graves here. How the hell do you get this bleeder to Oh yeah, I'll just do it that way. There you go. So these are just on the side. Let's go down to the graves. This is a really old grave here. And look at that, there's um there's an old look at this old stone that's just been scattered here. Look at that everyone. Right, so we've got here Mary Ann, the beloved wife of Thomas. Bunt of Wordsbury She died in 1903. This is quite weather worn, but it's probably because it's been under this huge tree. You know, can you see my finger, can't you? It's bloody... I, did, I should have put my control on. Look at these black currants. Sweet. Let's try them. I end up in hospital now. Black currants, 
Oh god. They have as well. So do you want me to get that for you now? Oh well we've got um Ugh, bitter. And we've got look at these. Oh no mum, I'll come back and get it under the cover of darkness. You won't be able to come down here and down. Black blue. Black currant. Are they the same Black thing? Berries. Black berry then, yeah. They're nice. Oh my god. Those are sweet. They're, so They're sweet. really nice. Make a nice pie. Might have to come back with a bag. Honestly, you they make a lovely pie. Very sweet. Very sweet, aren't they? You know, give it to Saints, we've got Tesco's. Fortunes. Ah, they've got the black currant and berries. Black currant and raspberry. Yeah. For a punnet of those, we'll charge you about two quid. And these are perfect because, well, there's no dogs coming in here peeing on them well, up there, is they're there? They're not at the side of the road, so they, there's no way. Mm. Go down, Ash. Yeah. I'm going to come back down later with a bag. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do. Well, everyone, I've just been eating. <laughs> I like these noises. I've put the camera on so you can hear these noises because it's hilarious. Um, the birds cuckooing or whatever they do. Um, but I've just been down the bottom there and there's a really nice blackberry bush. We've just been eating some of the berries as you've seen and they're really sweet. So I'm going to come back down in a bit and I'm going to come with a bag and I'm going to pick some. Take them home and then I'm going to eat them. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Right, I think... Gotta go and look at that church.